Hi, welcome back to my channel Azure Learn. My name is Nagendra Kumar Singhoti and today's topic is all about Azure Container Instances. What are Azure Container Instances? We all know that containers offer a standardized and repeatable way to package, deploy and manage cloud applications. Azure Container Instances lets you run containers without managing virtual machines and without a higher level service, thereby increasing the agility with containers on demand. You can even secure your applications with hypervisor isolation available. Why use Azure Container Instances? Fast startup. You can launch containers in seconds, per second billing, incur costs only while the container is up and running. And the kind of security available is hyper-level security that helps you to isolate applications as completely as it would be in a VM. Custom sizes. Specify exact values for your CPU cores and memory requirements. Persistent storage also. You can even mount Azure file shares directly to a container to retrieve and persist state. You can use same API for scheduling both Windows and Linux containers. These are all some of the benefits and advantages. And what is that we are going to do in today's demo? We are going to create an Azure container instance and run a container image inside it. And we will try to understand the restart policy configuration options that are available with. We will try to understand environment variables, how to make it secure, and how do we attach data volume to persist data when container exits. And we will try to observe some logs, events, and then monitor the CPU and usage memory of the Azure containers, okay? Even before we move to the demo, I just would like to let you know about the container restart policies available. Azure Container Instances has three restart policy options. Always, never, on failure. That means while you create Azure Container Instance, you can say whether to get restarted or never to get restarted or get restarted only on failure. Okay. So you might be thinking, okay, so these are all simple containers, one or two or three or four, something. So, but for scenarios where you need full container orchestration, what should I be doing? In case if you are looking for service discovery across multiple containers, automatic scaling, coordinated application upgrades, something like this, then Microsoft recommends Azure Kubernetes Service, AKS. In case if you have not seen my previous video on AKS, you can click on the link that's appearing in the top right corner and then you can watch that video also. Okay, let's get into a quick demo. I'm into my Azure portal. I'm clicking on click Create Resorts, click on Containers, click on Create container instances. Okay, so I would create a new resource group, ACI demo resource group. Say okay. Container name, ACI demo instance. And select the region. I would be selecting. Asia Pacific, Central India. This is the region I always select. Availability zones for now, no. Quick start image. So in the first part of the demo, I'm going to create a container instance with a quick start image given by Microsoft from Microsoft Container Registry. In case you do not know what is Microsoft Container Registry, and Microsoft has uploaded many images for the usage and this is publicly made available and the inventory can be browsed not from this particular screen but can be done from the docker okay so in this i am trying to make use of a hello world kind of application and the size the advantage in azure container instance is about 
CPU cores, how many you want, and then the amount of memory that you want, you can specify it according to your need. And for now, I'm going with the default. If you want to change, you can change. For network, you have three options available, public, private, and none. I'm going with public to make it available public. And let me give this name for the DNS as ACI demo. It's available. And 80 is the port by default kept open. I would go with that. So while configuring additional container properties, you would come across this restart policy, which we have discussed some time back. We have three options on failure, always and never. I am choosing always and environment variables. You have option either to make it secure or keep it open. For now, I'm leaving it. This is a key value pair information that you give. In the first demo, I'm not going to use this. In the second demo, I'm going to use it for a connection string and then access key of a DB. I'm going to showcase it to you. For now, I'm moving ahead. Tags, I'm not using any in this. And then review and create. Once the validation gets succeeded, I'm going to go ahead and then click on create. So now the deployment in progress and it should not take much time. Okay, deployment is complete and then let's go to the resource. Okay, you have the public IP available and then you have the fully qualified domain name available. Okay, I'll try to copy this to the clipboard, the fully qualified domain name and then put it in the browser. Okay. I have the app up and running in the container instance. I would show you some of the settings that you can have a look at. Containers, you can check in this screen how many containers you are running and what are all the events occurred with that and the properties, logs. Coming to the identity, you have two options available. Both are under preview. One is system assigned managed identity and the other one is user assigned managed identity. Since both are in preview, I'm not going to talk about that in this discussion. You can have a look at the properties that are set for your container instance. Okay. Now let's move to a second demo. In my second demo, what am I going to do is I'm going to create a resource which is Azure Cosmos DB. I'll go to databases, click on the Azure Cosmos DB create, and I'm going to click on core SQL resource group. I would choose the same resource group where my app is going to run. Instant details, account name, ACI demo Cosmos DB, and location region, I would choose Central India and capacity I would go with this default free tier discount I would like to get it applied and limit the total amount so that I'm not going to get charged global distribution I'll go with the default for now networking all networks I would allow it backup policy I would go with the default settings encryption I would go with default options I'm not giving any tags get it reviewed and created validation is through i'm clicking on create to get that created while the deployment is in progress let me give you what is my plan i'm going to create a container instance run an image from the microsoft container registry that's a voting app and that voting app i'm going to get it connected to the db that i'm creating okay my azure cosmos db is created let me go to resorts this is my cosmos db i would like to have two details noted that's related to the primary key and then the url okay okay so what is that i'm going to do now is create a container instance and then pull an image which is in a voting app which is given by microsoft it's a sample application and I'm going to pull that from the Microsoft Container Registry. Create a resource. Click on Container Instance. 
choose the subscription, choose the resource group and give the name voting app Cosmos DB is the name, Central India, availability zones no and here I would give the Docker Hub or other registry. The name of the image that I am trying to pull is Azure Vote Front and it's a Linux based one. I don't want to change anything on the size. Go to network and let me keep the same. And this is where the environment variables making it secure, keeping it open. How do you use it? I'm going to show it to you. I'll keep this as always the restart policy and this is the Cosmos DB endpoint which we have kept copied done and then I would provide Cosmos DB master key which we have kept copied ready and then that one I am passing it here. Okay, so these are the two environment variables which would be utilized by my container instance while getting started and that helps it to get connected to the DB. Okay, tags, I'm not giving any, review and then create. Once the validation gets done, click on create to get the container instance created. Deployment is in progress, let's wait. Okay, it got created, let's go to the resorts. Okay, let me copy the IP address, put it here. Okay, you got the voting app and this Azure voting app is something related to the pets. I have used the application and I'll show you now. I'm going to stop this container. Okay, it got stopped. You can see the CPU usage memory getting populated. Now once it's stopped, I'll try to use the same app again. You just observe that cats four words secured, dogs secured three words. Okay, this is what it is. And then I'm trying to refresh. Okay, so app is not available. I would start the container instance. I would wait for it to get started completely. Okay, now it got started. I'll try to take the IP, put it and check it. So this is where my application I left and this is where I am back with it. Okay. So this is how you can create the Azure container instances and then connect it to the backend with connection strings and other environment variables by supplying it while creating. I have tried doing it using the Azure portal and I haven't used purposefully the Azure Cloud Shell. Otherwise, you can even do the same, all of these activities using Azure Cloud Shell also. Okay, hope this is helpful and this is it from my side for today. If you have liked this video, please do like, share and subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay tuned to upcoming videos. Thanks for all your time, patience and cooperation so far. Good day, bye-bye.